know I am in the process of reading The Woman in White. It's not going to go. There we go. <laughs> By Milky Collins. Oh, gracious goodness. <sighs> if you've read this book before, you know. You know. If you haven't, you need to read it so then you will be in the know. Because... What is it with people in loud cars? <laughs> I... Oh goodness. I watched the TV series movie about this several years ago. It was the one that had Justine Waddell as Laura and Tara Fitzgerald, I think, as Marion. Oh goodness, I... <laughs> I didn't even realize it was a book, so I probably wouldn't have picked it up if I hadn't watched that series or movies for already. And the other part of it is, is that it means I know how it ends. Now, I can't do thrillers or horror stories or super stressful, even, even stories with a lot of, like, drawn out embarrassment. <laughs> I hate those stories because I just, I can't do it. It makes me so anxious and so stressed out because I relate and I, like, identify with the characters so much. I just, I can't do it. So if it's a particularly stressful book or something, either A, I won't finish it, or B, if it's something that I really, really, really want to finish, it means I probably know what the ending is. Either I've seen a movie or adaptation of it, or I've looked up the Wikipedia article just to make sure. Because the number of times I've had it where it's a movie or series or a book, and the ending is just, oh, it's disgusting. And... It makes me so angry because I feel like I've spent so much time invested in especially look at how thick this thing is like there's what let me see here I'm actually gonna check and see because I don't even know exactly there are 627 pages and it's not exactly a big type like so I know how this ends and I double checked to make sure that the movie slash series, I don't remember what it is, was not drastically wrong from the book. So I just checked to make sure. It's written in a style where it's narrated by several different people and Rokie Collins is a genius at the different voice slash writing styles, I guess, for each of the different people. So there's this ridiculous foolish idiotic uncle and the way that he's supposed to be writing and there's the lovesick Mr. Hartwright and the brave champion champion Marion who is just splendid and then there's the sanctimonious stuck up housekeeper whose section I'm in right now and she's just so snooty and you're just like Arr. and the villain oh gosh oh he's creepy oh he's so creepy but he's like so nice but he's creepy <laughs> it's the weirdest thing uh, I'm a little over halfway done and I was reading this just like all day yesterday I was just like oh man oh man okay because we're getting to like, there's some spying and some intrigue and then Marion gets sick and you're just like, ah. <laughs> poor Laura. Because ah. her husband is a monster and, oh goodness. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it though. The writing style and the whole thing about it. Just the mood and the characterization. Some parts it does seem to drag just a little bit, but I think that's mainly because of day and age. It's it's one of those classic style books where they're a bit denser, a bit heavier, but oh, I love that language. I love words and the way that they all fit together. And yes, I know it's different from like newer modern day, how we actually speak, but those big, lengthy, beautiful, gorgeous words that are all just put together and mm, it makes me so happy. <laughs> also, this is a very beautiful edition of this. I think it's a Penguin Classic or something. Yeah, it's Penguin Classics. Uh, it's just from the library, but 
I think I might have to buy this book just because it's so, so good. It's so good. <sighs> if you haven't read it, I do recommend it. But again, I can't 100% recommend it because I'm not at the end yet. So we'll see if I still like it by then. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, 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 I'll check in with you later on, on how I'm feeling about this book uh, once I get a little bit further in. I have to work on some other stuff, but then I have to go to work in about 20 minutes and then I can read all day. It's going to be great. We'll find out if I still like this. I know this isn't going to be the best quality or the best audio that it could be, but... Oh, it's just such a good story and it's just coming along so beautifully and it's so stressful but just so gorgeous and I love stories that talk about the relationship of sisters. It just makes me so happy. <laughs> also it's really pretty out and I know it's a gloomy, overcast, sad day but it's springtime and there are so many birds and I've seen so many daffodils and there's dandelions everywhere. And it's just making me so happy. <laughs> I just had to take a moment because there was a really good part. And it was really happy and it's making me really happy. So I was going to share it with you guys. <laughs> but now I'm going to keep reading because I'm just like, oh, we're going to get to the good part. See you guys, see you guys. I only have that much left. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be such a bad quality clip, but I don't care because it's such a good story. Anyway, on to reading. Oh man. We're getting to the intrigue and the exciting parts. And his Italian friend is awesome. Okay, so let's talk about this. Oh my goody aunt. It was so good. I just realized my microphone's not plugged in. Hold up, hold that thought. Let's, let's fix this here. Okay, maybe that'll be better. I don't know. I, oh, I freaking love this book. It is so good. I just, it has a fantastic ending, the characters, it's like a thriller, mystery, not murder, but like crime slash criminal, super creepy bad guy. Oh, it's so good. I have to be careful because there's some pretty significant things that happens in the last like 100, 200 pages and I don't want to spoil them because they were completely unexpected and it was phenomenal. So this story is mainly focused on two sisters and the young drawing master that comes to teach them. And said drawing master, Mr. Walter Hartwright, falls in love with the younger sister. And of course this is not, it cannot happen. He is a drawing master, she is a very rich heiress, like never gonna happen. So this lady, her older sister, Marion, sits down, has a very lovely, caring, kind talk with Mr. Wal uh, Walter Hartwright, and is like, you gotta go. It would be a kindness to both you and her to just depart. And so, he does. And the lady that he was in love with um, had previously, she was actually already engaged to somebody. So... Percival Glide, I believe it is. I think it's Percival, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Yes, it is. Okay, I was going to say, I feel like I should know this, but it's so Percival Glide. She has been engaged to him for about two years since her dad died, and her dad, on, on her dad's deathbed, he was like, I want you to marry this guy, and she was just like, because I love you and I care about you, okay. And it's interesting too because the concept of marriage in this day and age, and I'm not sure if it specifies here in the beginning at what time period it's supposed to be in. Um, let's see if it shows. 1860. Okay. In that day and age, the approach to marriage was very rarely anything to do with romance. It was like 99% of the time something to do with a uh, 
business or you know health and well-being for women so that they would be taken care of uh, because at that in that time period women didn't really have a lot of control over their own lives unless they were married. They couldn't own property, they um, were very dependent upon their fathers, brothers, uncles, cousins, whatever, unless they were married and then it was on their husband. Right or wrong, we're not going to go into that discussion today. <laughs> That's a completely other thing. So L Laura, the one of the, the other sister, Laura, Marion, and Walter are the main characters in this book. Laura was um, ready and willing to marry Sir Percival Glyde because she didn't dislike him and it would mean that she would be safe and t taken care of as, as well as her sister because that was a very common thing. If you had unmarried women relatives, um, aunts, cousins, sisters, nieces, whatever, it was very common if you were able to get a good marriage that then you could provide for them through that marriage. And so that's what she was thinking until she met Walter Hartwright and kind of fell in love, which was a problem. I'm not going to go into any more detail with this because if I do, you will get the entire rundown for this novel in the next 10 minutes. I loved this story so much. I want to get myself a copy of it because also, oh, I know I said it earlier, but such a pretty copy. It was phenomenal. Wilkie Collins' writing style was just unbelievable. It's written, I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier. If I did, then I can always just cut this up. If not, opinion. It's written based off of, from the perspective of different characters. So it starts with Walter Hartwright, then it moves to like, I think the family lawyer, then it goes to Marion, then it goes to random other people involved in it. So like a housekeeper, a cook. From the perspective of the villain, like, and the thing that shocked me the most about this, about the writing and whatnot, was how phenomenal of a job Wilkie Collins did at making the writing sound like a different person. You've got a sanctimonious, stuck-up housekeeper. You can tell. You've got an arrogant, creepy person. You can tell. The different ways of writing kind fatherly lawyer. It is so evident from the different perspectives that it, it's like it's different people. And I have read books before where it was supposed to be split over and written or yeah written from the perspective of different characters and it was mediocre. The different it all kind of sounds like the same person writing it and it's just kind of from so-and-so's perspective. In this book, it literally sounded like, you know, half a dozen, ten people wrote this book because of how distinctive the character voices were. So that was really fascinating. Highly, highly, highly recommend this. It does take a little bit to get into it because it is a classic novel. It is almost 700 pages long but it is amazing and the story is so good. It has a perfectly fantastic ending. So, so good. If you like kind of gothic -y, thriller, mystery, uh, sister relationship, love story, super evil villain, you'll like this book. You really will. <laughs> and I'm going to stop gushing about it go check it out from your library like I did. I'm gonna buy a copy now and just give it a shot. See what you think. Let me know. And if you have read it, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know your opinion on it. I really want to be able to discuss it and discuss all of the spoilers involved with this book. At some point I will probably try and start a book club and it'll be like, <laughs> spoilers. I'm gonna go ahead and end things here. I've got to go to work pretty soon. Yeah, so I want to sit and do a little bit of writing for the next few minutes. I, as I said, recommend it. Check it out. Thank you so much for hanging out on this kind of sort of reading vlog. And I will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.